Alright, so today I'm going to be talking about JS Doc, which is a great tool for encouraging developers to actually write good comments in their code, but it also will help you with defining what variables are, and as you're writing your code, it gives you hints to what you're doing, plus it can also dynamically, automatically generate documentation for you, for your functions, for your modules, for your applications. So. I have here a very fairly basic file. I've got a few global variables defined at the top. I've got a URL. I've got an array of values. I've got um, a string, which is a, a fake API key. And I've got a, a global variable that I'm going to use later on in my code. I've got a few functions here. One for making a fetch call to an endpoint. It's going to call another function, which is actually going to take whatever endpoints passed in. It's going to add the API key. It's going to add the base URL to it. Does the fetch call. When it's successful, it's going to call another function to build some HTML on the page. My initial function here is going to uh, add some event listeners or add an event listener to a button that's on the page. It's going to then set this main in the global variable so that I can use it later on. Uh, here's the add event listener function. It just adds the click listener to that main element. When somebody clicks on it, it's going to call the function from above to get some data. And keep in mind, this is all just sort of mocked up code. It doesn't really do anything. There is no real API attached to it. It's just something that's fairly standard that you would see this type of thing in a lot of applications. Here's the function for building that URL, taking my base URL adding the endpoint, putting the API key onto it, returning a URL object from this function. Then we have our build URL function. It's going to take the array of data that's passed in. It's going to loop through that, extracting a few properties from each one of those objects in the array of data that comes back. And then I'm going to take three of those things, saving them as this variable, and I'm going to return that from this map method. It's going to be saved as a products array. The products array, I'm then going to map through that and generate some HTML. And I'm exporting my init function, which starts the whole thing running. Okay. So if you want a copy of this code, there's a link down in the description to the code gist with this code so you can play around with it. What I want to do now is I have some comments already in here. I've already got some JS doc stuff set up, but I'm going to add a few more things as we go along talking about this. Now in the website for JS doc, uh, they've got fairly good documentation. You know, there's a getting started guide. Basically what you're doing is you are adding, zoom in here a little bit. We've got these tags. Everything starts with an at sign and you use these to define what the variables are, what the functions are, what the return values are, what default values you have, and things like that. So it gives you a way to identify the different parts of your file as you're writing them. VS Code, thankfully, comes with support for JS Doc. So if you are using their notation to comment your code, it's going to add some extra features into your file automatically. So let's take a look at that. Start of every file, I'm defining a bunch of stuff. You know, who is the author? What version of the file is this? Is there a general description? Uh, this is actually a link to a tutorial that's going to be generated for us. Uh, I'll come back and talk about this a little bit later. But I've defined the fact that this is a module. Here's the path to this file. So within my project, it's just right at the root. Okay, so here are the tags. And depending on what it is, there's different things that you pass in. So for author, there was name and an email address. The email address gets the standard angle bracket tags around it. Version just is looking for a number. When we come down to things like variables, and I want to define this so it can be used later. You can see right now with my cursor over top of the word base URL, it's giving the default value for what it is, but then it's got at constant. It's a string, base URL portion of the API URL. So it's giving me some information about that. And that's stuff that I added into my code right here. 
in this comment, I said add constant. I've defined what data type this variable is going to be. This is the name of the variable, so it connects the two things together. And then this is the description. And this shows up when I hover over it. Now, you may say, well, there's not much value because it's on the line right above it. But anywhere in my code that I'm using base URL. So if I go down here and I find base URL, here it is. I move my mouse over it. There, I've got the definition. I know what it's supposed to be or what the value currently is of that thing. And that's all thanks to my comments, my tags that I'm adding as part of JS doc. So we've got one for base URL. Here's one with colors. Now I've said set here, this could be an array. Inside the curly braces, we're defining what the data type is going to be. So if it's an array or an object, you can then specify what are the parts. So this is an array of strings that I've got right here. And I can say it's a series of enumerated values. So enum lets us do that. Here's one which is basically just another string, like the one base URL. So constant string API key. So this is a string. And here's the comment that's going to be seen later on when I mouse over that value. Okay. Here's another one where I haven't actually created a variable here. Type def. This is a type definition. So I'm defining something called product. Anytime I use product as an object type down below, when I say type product, it's going to connect type product in my JS docs up to this type definition for product. And you can see I put my mouse over product there. Type product is an object that has three parameters, ID, name, and price. And it's got the data types for each of those. So later on in our code, I have a little bit of a contrived example here, but nonetheless, we've got um, right here. Yes. Um, prod, this variable. I'm creating an object that has these three things inside of it. Now, if I put my cursor over this, it knows it's a type product. And that's because I've added a comment in here to say that this thing is type product. So I'm attaching this definition, this type def that I put up at the top of my file to this. So I automatically know what these things are supposed to be. So prop property price is supposed to be a number. Property name is supposed to be a string and ID is also supposed to be a number. Okay, right here. I'm defining a type. I'm saying that products is going to be an array of things of type product. So array is our general type dot. And then this could be string number, whatever I want, but I want it to be an array of product objects. All right, back up to the top here. That was our type def that we just talked about connecting type definitions with types. And then what you should be doing for every function is providing some information about what a function does. So here's my description. And, you know, if that's the very least that you do is adding comments to say what a function does, great. That is an excellent first step. But going beyond that, once you've got descriptions of what the functions are, you can start to do things like defining what these are. So endpoint the parameter that's being passed into my function. My comments now explain to me when I mouse over it, it says that it's supposed to be a string. And there's a little note saying it's an API, API endpoint to be added to the base URL for my API call. Okay, fantastic. So endpoint I know is a string. So I'm passing in the string endpoint right here. I know what it is, it is a string. And when I call build URL, it knows that build URL is a function. Now it's saying right now, build URL accepts something called endpoint and it can be any data type. And then it's going to return a URL. Okay. That bit right there, that one line, 
that is actually being built by VS Code. It's trying to make its best guess as to what's going on. So it knows the return value for the function. It knows it's a URL object, but it doesn't know what endpoint in that function is. So let's go down to this build URL function and take a look. Right here, build URL. It does not know what it is. So right now, VS Code is saying it can be anything. I don't know what it's supposed to be. Well, for JS Docs, I'm going to actually come in here and say what it's going to be. Now, all I did was forward slash two asterisks, and then it automatically threw in the slash. Here, I'll go back like this. When I hit enter, oh, I'll have to back up a little bit. When I hit the enter key, VS Code is actually looking to see how many parameters are being passed in. And it knows there's one and it's called endpoint. So it wrote this for me. And inside of here, I can say it's supposed to be a string. I can now add a comment. Something like that. Returns. Okay. VS Code was guessing it saw this and figured, okay, well, it's a URL that's being returned. I can do the same thing here. I can say that it is returning a URL. You know, we could, if there's other things that are similar, we can find them in this list. But URL, that is actually the thing that we want. So there it is. My function definition now says returning a URL, and it's only accepting a string. So we go back up to the top here where we had it where we were calling build URL, and now it knows the endpoint being passed in needs to be a string. All right. Colors, right here. Here's something that I've defined up above as a constant. Well, it knows that it is an colors is an array of strings, and there's my note, list of possible color values to be used. So there it is. I have it in my documentation through JS Docs, so just mousing over it, VS Code is able to say what this thing is supposed to be or what it is. Provide me extra information. My add event listeners. I've got a description for the function. Param. The main, this thing right here, this main argument being passed in. The data type is HTML element. So I know what's supposed to be passed in. Now, if I import this file into another one, I'm going to be able to tell through JS Talks and via, JS Docs and VS Code that this thing that's being passed in needs to be an HTML element. HTML, we talked about that one already. And I think the only other one that doesn't have a comment is just the init. So same idea. Start the comment, the double comment, two stars, hit enter, and it's going to fill in how many parameters button. What's that supposed to be? Well, it's going to be an HTML element. And so is main. These are both HTML elements that are being passed in. And we can add a note saying the button to be clicked and the HTML area where content is added. Okay. So there's JS Docs. Now there's lots and lots of these tags that you can learn over time. Start off with description, version, author, param, constant, returns, just those basic things. Start off with those, get into the habit of using those in your code. Then once you've got them, so we know VS Code is gonna do a lot for us with just those basic comments, that's fantastic. This is JS Code, a node module that we can actually install on our computer. So we can install this globally and then have access to the functionality that lets us generate documentation. So that's our next step. Inside VS Code, in my terminal, we'll do an npm install dash g. So it's a global install and then JS doc. That's the thing that we want to install. I already have it. I can do it again. It's not going to hurt anything. I install this. Now I have the functionality on my computer that if I open this up, you can see this is where I am right now. App.js. I can 
run JS doc and then say, hey, the file or the folder that I want to do, this is the one, app.js. When I hit enter and run this, you can see here it created this folder called out. And inside of there, it generated all these things, all these files based on the fact that I had at module here, based on the fact that I gave this file name, it read through here, knew what was being imported, if there were anything that was being imported, and it generated these HTML files. Now, I've already got this up and running in my browser. Here it is, if I refresh. There we go. So, modules. Here's my app.js one. And we've got API key, base URL, colors. These are the things that I declared globally. Methods. These are my functions from my page. And it knows what's being passed in. It knows the data type of those things. There's a description. It tells me where in the file it came from. So we have all of these things built in. And there's a type definition for product. Exactly what is a product? Just another way of getting around here. So depending on what you have, this navigation, this is completely generated by JS doc for us. So we've got all these pages. So we can, once we have our file, tell JS docs that we want to generate these tutorials. So we've got a JS docs command app.js that will generate this. And you can delete this as many times as you want. If I came in here and I were to delete this, not a problem. It will just create it again every time we run this. And inside of here, if I want to add these tutorials, there's just the one flag that we add, app.js-u. And then we say where we want to place it, which folder do we want it to look for our tutorials. There could be multiple files inside of here. We're going to go inside of slash tutorials. This is the folder we want to go in. Oh, something that's not happy about here. No such file or folder. Oh, yes. I should put a period in front of this to say starting from the current location. There we go. So I'll do this. There we go. Starting from the current location, go into the tutorials folder, find any files. And we've got tutorial overview here. And it has generated this file. So it's going to be called tutorial overview.html, which back here, this is the name that we gave. So it'll be tutorial hyphen this name dot html. And that's going to be here. Oh, I closed the server here. We'll go live again, but I'll do it with this file. There we are. So here is the markdown generated tutorial that we have. That's the tutorial section in our modules. There we have all of our functions with all the parameters. All right, so that should be enough for you to uh, get started with JS Docs. So VS Code's got the built-in support as we write these things. JS Docs, I encourage you to go through and just play around with some of these. Any of these are you're not sure, not sure how they work, you can just click on them and they've got examples, a little description of how they work. So it's all here in the documentation. When you want to generate your documentation, just install. And it is just the npm install command, install it globally, JS Doc. And then that is the command, JS Doc. Run the command with the name of the script or scripts that you want to generate, just like here. So JS Doc, and there's the name of your JavaScript file. Okay. So good luck with that. Have fun. And as always, thanks for watching.